How are we doing, guys? Welcome back. So, we finished all of the reactor and we've done the fight with Aurora. So now all that's left is to go talk to the governor and presumably go back into the Triumph. Oh, we have this chat here first as well, I guess. So, go on. Well, do these guys not talk to us? Oh, I guess they don't. In case you, I assume the dogmatic option we had earlier was that they would come into the fight as well. Not that I'd really want to do that. That sounds like a complete waste. But... I suppose it would help out if people were, you know, melee-based squads. But anyway, so I think we're done here. So we're going to pop back open. over here. So I assume we would definitely want to go back to the void ship at some point because we've got a couple of uh, serious injuries we need to just get rid of. Because the uh, the fight the fight after this is is a thing for those who haven't seen it. So already done that. I don't think we've missed anything here. I think we can just go straight back. Ooh. Oh, is this just a cinematic look at the system? Did I just not click this earlier? Because I assume it just shows the whole structure. It's cool that they animated this. It gives you a sense of quite how big this thing is. But it doesn't really tell you anything either. Cool. So that was just a look round, right? Uh, I think we've done everything then, and we can go back to the void ship. Probably gonna have a quick run around, make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, yeah. And then I think we'll pop to the shot. I wanted to pop the Thunderfang once more. I don't think profit factors changed, but I just want to make absolutely sure we've got everything we can. Because after this section is the end of Act 1, and therefore we can't come back. For various reasons, which people will find out. Try to avoid spoilers. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Is this the interrogator, I assume? Rude yeah. Trader. I was somewhat brusque at our first meeting, and I would like to make up for it by expressing my thanks for your assistance in the electrodynamic synobium. Your arrival could not have come at a better time. Unfortunately, my personal investigation has hit a dead end. I think I will have to call upon outside resources to continue the search. So I assume if you'd gone with the dogmatic option and given him the thing, he could run down the thing. I think we just lie on this one. Like we're not dogmatic and we like if you're going dogmatic, you probably would have not done throwing away the dagger anyway, so we'll just go with that's a shame, and he'll probably have to go back and do it outside. This is quite a good way of doing it. Unfortunately. But I think taking the artifact away from him might change his personal story. So, there interesting how that changes more. things. The Lord Inquisitor gave me this item some time ago. He must have thought it likely that I would find myself aboard this vessel sooner than he. I was instructed to deliver this device to Lady Theodora. However, given recent events, I believe I ought to present it to you. This is an elucidator. A sacred machine capable of translating the languages of remote and lost worlds into low gothic. It can even process Xenos languages to a certain degree. Not without infelicities, but possibly well. Basically, here's a translator. You're probably going to be talking to people who don't speak, in, well, low gothic English for regular people. Um, yeah, you might need this a bit later. Uh... <laughs> Accuse him, is it some sort of tracking? I'm going to press this. Normally I'd just go up here, but uh, yeah, yeah, press this and just see what he says. Certainly not. The Elucidator is such a rare and complex creation of the Omnisia that neither I nor any of my colleagues would dream of compromising its integrity. If you wish, have your tech priests confirm that there are no listening devices inside. <laughs> uh, cuts a glance, one of which you suddenly realise he's charged with a certain almost personal interest. <laughs> hmm. Apologies in advance if I unknowingly violate the protocol for conversing with someone of your elevated status. I think a slip in composure is to be expected when one is hosted personally in the Lord Captain's study. Yeah, I'll be honest. Maybe if I was doing dogmatic I'd consider this as an option, but I'm probably not going to. Uh... What do you plan to do now? I would like to offer my assistance in resolving your immediate problems. 
I am aware that the ship suffered considerable losses during the recent mutiny and was damaged by the cultists' actions, and you have lost many valuable officers as well. You are in a difficult situation. I am at your disposal. What do you think will come of the electrodynamic cerebrium? Yeah. Or struggle with those sorts of words. Electro priests who survived the attack. Fortunately for them, the cultists did not manage to seriously corrupt the holy site, partly thanks to the priesthood's efforts. Nevertheless, I would not be surprised if the local explorator fleet decides to audit and purge the damaged units once it hears about what has happened. It's probably the sensible choice, let's be honest. Uh, return to duties. Thank you for your time. Please consider me at your complete disposal while I am aboard your vessel. Congratulations, Junior Victor. The entire vessel was impatiently awaiting news of your expedition success. Governor is expecting to. Yeah, this, so this is the setup for the triumph. But now we've gone back to the ship, that should hopefully remove all of our issues we were going to have with the wounds we suffered during the last mission. Which we will definitely need everyone at full strength, because this. If it's anything like it used to be in Beta, this fight is hell. Um. Let's do Heinrich now. Let's have a quick chat. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? I'm usually the one interested in the pasts of those around me. Not the reverse. I come from a night world. Guizorn III. I belong to a branch of one of the noble houses until my exceptional abilities were discovered. After that, I was sent on a black ship to Holy Terra where I was trained, and I began my service for the glory of the Imperium. Do you remember your home planet? I do, but I have no ties to my homeworld now. None except my first name. I left Guizorn III when I was still a child. My family disowned me, stripping me of my family name. I was given a new one by those who trained me. Even for a noble, being branded a psyker is a mark of eternal shame. I experienced that firsthand before I was put on the black ship. How did you discover your abilities? Like many psychers unaware of their curse, I found out when a strong emotional reaction triggered an involuntary response. <sighs> My great aunt had a pet grink. One day, it bit me, and I boiled it from inside out. And when my great aunt slapped me for what I'd done, I boiled her too. <laughs> so yeah, they're welcome to psychic powers in untrained psychers. It goes nuts, and people just start dying randomly. Don't don't don't, don't worry about it. It's perfectly normal. Uh, um, yeah, this option is pretty ignorant. This is uh, lackluster. I think uh, we'll go with the Sorcerer's Powers. I hope Sorcerer's Powers are truly dangerous. I hope you've mastered your abilities since then. When I arrived on Holy Terror and was tested, I was found to be suitable material for becoming a sanctioned psyker, able to bend his curse to his own will. I can assure you that the adepts of the Astra Telepathica were right in their assessment. Tell me about Black Ship. Picture a vast prison ship filled with frightened, angry psychers who can't control their abilities and who have just lost their homes and their families. Some of them were children and adolescents like I was. Some were monstrous creatures who no longer had the right to be called human or psychopaths who reveled in their impure powers. Once, when one of the miscreants broke free. Those in command simply depressurized the bay and got rid of the culprit, along with the prisoners and crew tainted by him. But even after that, I heard the echo of inhuman suffering and terror that filled that part of the ship. It grieves me to recall that episode to this day. You were sent to the Inquisition straight after training? <laughs> no. First, I was accorded the status of a Psyker, fit for service in the Imperial Guard, where I then spent several years. It was only afterward that I became an agent of the Golden Throne. Uh, let's talk about something else. How long have you served in the Inquisition? Since the day of my initiation as an Acolyte. 
So, decades. How many real years it's been, it's hard to say. When I return from a journey through the warp, I often discover that much more or much less time has passed in real space. Yeah, tra traveling through the warp is not like a usual wormhole. It's, it's a time travel based phenomenon. It, 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 it's not quite like jumping back a thousand years, but sometimes uh, sometimes the, 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 the ages mismatch. Uh, you visited worlds in your ser during your service, I wager. Indeed. I have visited many of the places brought to the Emperor's light and those sullied by the filth of the arch enemy. In truth, even after all these years spent visiting the various corners of the Imperium and looking beyond its borders, I still consider the Segmentum Solar to be the greatest of all humanity's bastions. Nothing compares to the majesty of holy terror, the might of Mars, the grandeur of the Segment's other worlds. What duties have you been carrying out for the Inquisition? Inquisitor, sorry. You can't really be expecting me to answer that question, can you? <laughs> Secrecies are everything. Uh, for someone who's been in service, you certainly look young. The first step for biomancers such as myself is to take control of the processes of their own body, including aging. <laughs> I've endured innumerable hazards in my work. If I allowed every trace of them to remain, I would look completely different. Today. Let's change the subject. Gladly. Uh, you're not the Inquisitor's only acolyte, correct? <laughs> of course not. The Lord Inquisitor's entourage comprises dozens of people. The best of the best. Experts in various fields and disciplines. Some of them I know personally. Others I have never met. To be honest, I'm not even certain that the people I know are still alive. I used to work with other acolytes of the Lord Inquisitor, but in the Coronas Expanse, I have been working alone. Wandering among the stars without family or friends, don't you get lonely? I... <laughs> had never even considered such a thing before you asked. Hmm. Perhaps I do. Sometimes. So... Okay, I guess these are both flirty options. Let's talk about something else. Uh, if you're an interrogator, does that mean you hold a special position in the retinue? <laughs> we are not a retinue. We are acolytes. As for your question, I am closer than anyone else to the one I call my personal teacher. The Lord Inquisitor deemed me worthy of undertaking the most important and sensitive tasks requiring the attention of agents of the Golden Throne. Other other acolytes in the crusade. He already answered this. <laughs> well, he said he was Such working alone anyway. Uh, what can you do as a psyker? The Lord Inquisitor was most insistent that I master the discipline of Santic Demonology. I use my faith and my power to crush the enemies of the Imperium. Servants of Chaos tremble at the sound of the Emperor's name uttered by my lips. I am also a skilled biomancer. I can manipulate bodily processes. Sometimes... Sometimes I resort to those skills in the course of my work, when it is necessary to make the subject of an interrogation more cooperative. I must take my leave, because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was about to get dark. Uh, I assume no one else has anything to say. We'll do a quick run around. I'm not expecting much, though. I've heard anything interesting in the Vox Spirits. Nothing. Like, we're pretty much just wrapping up the act, but I just want to make sure I haven't missed any dialogue. Do you anything, know anything about a ship named Fiery Reckoning? Uh, okay, ask the uh, high manufactorum guy. Greetings. Nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. Okay. Right, so I think there's just nothing going on. So we'll just talk to the high manufactorum guy because I'm curious whether that triggered something. Have you ever heard the name of the uh, the name Fire Reckoning? From what I can tell, it's a void ship of some sort. Not most immediately familiar to me. Your ship. Please allow me a moment. Hmm. Did indeed sign a contract with the owner of a vessel. Blah, blah, blah. Pick up cargo from that planet. Uh... So, in other words, he doesn't know much. 
Um, ooh, what's that? I would like to order this shipping and transportation of some goods. Oh, so this is how checking shop works. I mean, this just saves us time later, so we don't have to travel around. If we can't afford anything here. Is that a level up noise? Or is that just the level up from uh, the thing kicking off? So, can we afford anything useful is the question first. We do have this. Attack deals 1 to 3 damage. Toxin 5. It won't let me have a look at it. I assume Toxin is damage over time. Bunch of medkits. That would be good for us later on. Might want to invest to pick that up. We do now have a lot of gear to hand over and turn into cargoes. Thankfully it all stacks with itself, so we don't even particularly have to think about it. We did do we have crack grenades? Because the whole point of picking up I mean, just a regular grenade would be good. But the idea of having a crack grenade for the tech, uh, the space marine would be ideal. I swear we picked one up at some point. I guess maybe I'm misremembering stuff. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it's an auto gun. Could get rid of the bolters, but they're only 10% cut. I'll keep them around. I'd rather get rid of just like regular auto guns because they're all worth the same, oddly enough. Wonder whether they should change that because the bolters should be worth a lot more. Okay, I guess that will do. And then, what do we want to sell? So, you're after holy gifts and trophies. Do we have any of those ready? Do have some holy gifts. That pushes it up. Probably need 500 more, was it? Like, we can't really afford anything down here. What's this do? Ooh. So that's really good for landing in a position and then just sticking there, which is actually really strong for us. Grab these. Definitely want at least the option of it. I don't think we're going to have anyone running around with a plasma sword. Uh, power, uh, plasma pistol, sorry. Plasma sword. Um, but yeah, definitely an option we might need to consider. I mean, is, these do carry on beyond where we are now. So it's not like picking these up is a like picking this reputation up is going to go anywhere. But I do want that. So we'd need 1500. I think again, I don't think you're going to get more than 500 for anything. So it's probably grab that and then stick a bunch of armor kits on it or something. Need to get to 1500. That'll do. That maxes out at least the current stuff and allows us to pick up that. We are short of this. So had we gone for... Um, had we gone for the profit factor option on the uh, Navas Nobility Station, that's what I'm trying to get to, we'd be able to grab these two. Not sure this is particularly worth anything. I mean, it's a LAS gun. I guess it does something. But this would have been nice on the single shots, particularly with either plasma or just my sniper rifle. Because I don't know if we actually have any good gloves on at the moment. But that's all the shopping done for the moment. Um, just double check the kit, because we did pick some stuff up and I didn't bother equipping any of it. So this, what does this do? Law Imperium. Don't particularly need that right now, so that's good. I guess... Are you wearing anything? Yeah, that can go there. Or could we equip both? Because it was technically a ring slot, wasn't it? Hmm. Probably worth just shoving stuff around. Why is it only showing me six people? Where's... Who have we lost? We've lost Tech Priest for the moment, haven't we? Which is annoying. Because uh, I, might, I might wanted to give him stuff. Um... So what did we pick up from that fight? We picked up this. Which I guess goes on you for now. That's just an armor helmet. Does anyone not have a helmet? I don't think anyone does. 
and then it was this, which, you, I mean, I'm going to give it to her because it's plus four wounds, but I don't think anyone else can wear it, so it's kind of irrelevant. I think that's all that mattered. It doesn't look like we did have a crack grenade, which is annoying because I did want one. Uh, who did we have training in Medicaid? I think it was you. That's fine there as well. And then the sister... Just double check it's not in someone's inventory. Which would be something I would do. No, in which case the sister, we want some grenades just loaded into her stuff. Knocking him prone would be funny. Unlikely to get toughness tests through though. Is the problem. So what does Disturb do again? Willpower and Fellowship tests. Okay. So none of those are particularly that important. But I guess the best of them... It's probably the knockback. Just If that happens, that tosses him a turn. So that'll be very important to pick up. Right. So all that's done. All the blobs out the way. I think we're good. Why is the tech? Can I go to the tech priest? I'm pretty sure he's still on the ship. Oh, ran the wrong way. It's over here. Can't believe it. Can't remember if we did the talk with this guy. We'll do this quickly first and then from there head down to the planet. So Abel's now also on the ship. I don't think Lord Evan, the guy we picked up on the prison planet, is ever on the ship, so not particularly. Um, let's have a quick check with Abel. How are you feeling? Pass the diagnostic. So great agree. Uh, gaze into. <laughs> Basically, ask him, are you free for Uh, what was flawed has been purged. Yeah, okay, so he passes that test. What troubles him so? What judgment do you speak do you, do you speak of? Hmm. Yeah, okay. So basically Pascal is taking the responsibility. If he starts going nuts, he'll just shoot him. Um Why are you so concerned about him? he's not the only one he's not the one you were hoping to find? Yeah, but he has answers. You care for him as if he were truly young, your younger brother? I was trying not to give Abel any uncaused due, undue cause for dread. Why do you and Pascal have the same name? Naming of names is not in the index to the text. Naming of names is the text. Why he spoke different from Abel? He uh, thinks harmonic, imaginary, blah blah blah. Yeah, I don't think I really got into this in the beta, so I'm just gonna have to read through a bit slower. I'm sorry. Um, no, imagine there could be poets among the tech priests. Eh, it's, it's, it's not impossible, but it's a very odd type of poem. Um, Pascal, do you understand what Abel is referring to? He's seeking to convey the idea that our matching identifiers are not the key to some vital data point. They are in themselves the vital data point. At this stage, my analysis is... Yeah, okay. Um... Either yell at him to explain to Gary or try to take a softer approach. We'll try the softer approach, but uh, it's debatable which one of these is right. Nope. Uh, are we overthinking that it doesn't matter why your names are the same? What matters is that they are the same, if that's what you mean. They are connected, blah, blah, blah. Okay. What are you working on? Uh... Working on machine spirits, basically. Venerated Destruction Order, but Tech Priest able is able to adapt. Or Mendeus Mechanicus. Okay. Uh, why'd you do it? Looking for knowledge, right? Okay. Inspect the Sacred Machine. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like really odd machines. It's very difficult to describe without visuals, but you can see like servitors strapped up and a whole bunch of cogs and gadgets. Um, 
We either roll the logic, roll the perception, both of which we're really good at. Look for logical connections within the data. Most of the rooms are devoid of any meaning, but you notice a few of them are combined into formally uh, computational computer graphs. Uh, crystal is exquisite in clear water. Did it do? Yeah, so basically it's helping him find stuff. Uh, okay. I thank you for the generous gift. My subject, my interest in the subject has been exhausted. Uh, did you hear what Obel said? It seems we have contributed to remote design and deviated from the cycle. What does that mean? <laughs> Basically, you're not doing the standard tech pre stuff. You're starting to go a bit heretical, but never mind that. We're on a rogue trader ship. That happens all the time. Uh, cycle has the advantage of predictability. Yeah, essentially they're trying to be machines and they like to keep everything the same, but it also kills innovation. So, you know, bad things happen because essentially that's how we've been losing tech over millennia. Because people just haven't been researching. They've just been sat there repeating the same processes. Um, is that the promise of every heresy? Let's renounce our half distorted... Uh... Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to make sure. Because I suspect this affects his path towards us. So I guess this is the most Imperial, and then going down is towards the others. Yeah, we'll go with better to die fighting against chains than to rot alive. Same is true. The annihilation promised by Signation is inevitable. Yeah, so this is the whole thing with Pascal. Is he's essentially de deviating from the standard um, tech priest thing by going a little bit heretical. I want to know the truth about you. What did Aramat do? He fell into schism and challenged the sacred boundaries of knowledge. The blessed Amanat claimed the limits of what is permitted must be expanded because by refusing to explore certain law, we find ourselves in contempt of the seventh universal law. Comprehension is the key to all things. My mentor put forth a Stagnated. The ritual is now nothing but a cage for souls and forced worship of the old Messiah. He sought to break the cycle of mindless repetition because he saw the inevitable demise of our faith and all humanity at the end of it. He's not wrong, though. Uh, for me to go, his argument sounds reasonable. That's the Imperial line. That's interesting, but it does affect... That, that's actually just a false statement. Uh, and then fascinating. I'll go with the top one. Certain aspects of the Imperium have indeed ossified. Os ossified. Uh, his arguments sound reasonable. This statement is false. My mentor's words sound like heresy. Limits were established because it is dangerous to venture beyond. Each step past them could lead to a bloody slaughter. But the blessed Amanat was not afraid... How did you betray Aramat? The teachings of the blessed Amanat spread, and word of it reached the conclave of the Cognizant fleet. They recognized his teachings as tech heresy. Many tech priests suddenly vanished or were subjected to servo penance for minor transgressions. The students of Amanat, whose number included many enlightened and respected brothers, Prognosis showed that our most likely future was a schism and a fratricidal war that would destroy the Cognizant fleet. That I oh, confess sorry about that, bit, Alex. <laughs> that handed the information about my mentor's research over to the Conclave. Brazen anathematic self. 
settings of the Forbidden Law. The Conclave could use that data to summon Archmagus Amanat to stand trial and compel him to repent on pain of excommunicate Traitoris. His subsequent fate is unknown to me. So you betrayed your mentor? You are good at finding excuses as you are at technology. <laughs> this could be Zeech messing with people because the Chaos Gods do do that sort of thing. Uh, tech priest named Mabel, who is he? Assessing his personality is difficult. The spirit of Brother Abel is different from that of most people. Tech comrades of the Cog call such persons quiet ones. He possesses significant intellect but shuns communication. So far I have not been able to determine why Abel summoned me to Rikad Minoris, how he is related to the Blessed Ammonat, or why he bears the same name as me. Perhaps Reverend Abel may not be fully able to actualize and interpret the available data. What are you going to do next? I was wrong when I assumed it was the Blessed Archmagus Ammonat who assumed the guise of Abel and Abel. But there is a connection between him and the Reverend Abel, and I intend to uncover the nature of this link. Acknowledged, I will return to ruminating on the search for the Blessed Abernath. I want to know more about your past. The request is approved. I have no outright restrictions on disclosing this information. Where are you from? Information about my origins is... I belong to the priesthood of explorators and came to the Coronas Expanse over 200 years ago. Any events preceding that moment are insignificant. Yeah, for people unaware, people live a lot, well, certain people live very long lives in 40k universe. Others live very short ones for various inevitable demises that uh, aren't entirely under their control. Cough, cough. Um, how do you end up in the Coronas Expanse? I was honoured to become a member of the Explorator Cognizance Fleet. When the Adeptus Mechanicus summoned the Faithful for an exploratory venture into the depths of the Coronas Expanse, I joined the fleet in fulfilment of my sacred vows of comprehension. Why are you not with the fleet then? After I betrayed Archmagus Amanat, the fleet conclave directed me to the orbital station. Alter Templum Calixus EXT 17 for penance. This venerable temple station was founded in the early years of our expansion into the Coronas Expanse. It is currently a rear observation post of the Cognizant fleet in orbit around the star Furibundus. Who are the explorators? The sacred fraternity of explorers. The cult mechanica sends us out to the frontiers of the known sectors as researchers and conquerors. We are the warriors of the code who return to the lost worlds and devote themselves to 
I mean, it's not wrong, but also the tech priests are so in their dogma that it, it, they couldn't sit, tell a sane person from an insane one. Uh, tell me about Mecca Denrites. Or, you know, there's a slight AI in there, but we won't tell him that. Uh, we can stop there. Tell me more about the Egypts and Canicus. I am honoured to belong to the priesthood of Mars, guided by its tenets. We safeguard technology against the impure and the unenlightened. Why did you mention Mars? That is where the cult of the Omnissiah originated. And where we were granted the first revelations. Many millennia ago, we made an alliance with the Emperor of Terra and have served the Imperium ever since, paying the tribute of machinery, weapons, and void ships. Fair enough. Everything that bears the blessed seal of machinery comes from our hands, and it is we who make sure the operating rituals are performed as they were meant to. We are everywhere. We are the Mars forged steel bars that give the Imperium strength. What do you mean guard it? It's not very tra uh, it's not very treasure, it's not a secret. It is both a treasure and a secret. Technology is how the divinity of the Omnissiah manifests itself in this world. This is why the uninitiated only be allowed to touch the most vulgar and mundane of its instances. We, on the other hand, are authorized to use the sacred catechism of maintenance and operation. Although there is another reason to deny lay people the sacrament of knowledge, it can be dangerous. Twisted by renegades, the Omnissiah's wisdom is called heretic. And the exposure to it may corrupt the uninitiated. Another danger is knowledge strangely interpreted and inscrutably twisted by the minds of the Xenos. This thing is called Xenotech. Curious they did a Heretech one of these, but not a Xenos tech one, but you know, whatever. Sacred or, uh, objection. Okay, so this is an actual choice. Um. I think things you cannot understand is the opposite of seeking knowledge. Technology. Okay, so that's a logic-based one. Uh, that is jealousy-based. That is Imperium stuff. And that that's easy. Yes, yes. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Um, ooh. Do I try go down the logic route? It doesn't end good with him. Is the problem. But I guess we go with this. Dangerous to close to a heretical saying itself, but you know, whatever. Um, do you hold a high position in the, your fraternity? This selective indicates that I am a Magos, who has mastered the sacraments of many spheres of knowledge, and has the right to conduct services in a forged cathedral. Sword cathed forged cathedral is basically a manufacturer, isn't it? It's basically a way they just produce stuff. You can essentially program to produce stuff, whereas lower members probably wouldn't. Um, what is the Omnissiah in your understanding? He is the divine mechanism, the maker of technology. The universe was made to resemble a mechanical marvel because the Omnissiah rules over it. Knowledge is the highest form that he uses to manifest in the world. For now, someday he will come to this world in the absolute fullness of his splendor. The Adeptus Mechanicus.
Amicus worshipped the Emperor. He is the earthly manifestation of the Omnissiah, who brought humanity into the light of divine grace. What is behind the uh, Deptum Canis' enthusiasm for replacing flesh with uh, augmentations? Also, you know, it's probably horrific under there because it's a whole mash of mechanical and biological parts. Um, so we either go with a humanist approach, a curiosity approach, or calling it a superstition. I guess we're going to get refused on this one, but we'll go. I'm curious to see your augmentations. Holds, you see emaciated white meat gnawed through metallic shunt. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. Tech use. The site of the body transformed into an appendage uh, complex. Unfathomably ancient blueprints is mesmerizing. Every component. To... Curious. I'm curious what the difference is if we fail that test. Uh, so that's a bad thing. And then this is the Imperial. Okay, I guess we'll be nice because we did pass the tech use. I imagine it was a fairly... Oh god, that actually uses personal tech use? Oh yeah, because he's technically not in our retinue at the moment. So this is our tech use role. Interesting. That probably means in other conversations you don't use the person you're talking to's stats. Good to know. Um, that's why you always have seconds, by the way. Like you, don't... you have one person really good at it, and then you have a second person slightly less good at it, but details for later. Uh, Omnissiah has been generous to you. His creation is keeping you safe from death. The Omnissiah has been generous to you too. He has granted you understanding. Uh, you have a strange way of speaking. Is it because the augmentations of your faith does not dictate how you should express yourself? Partially true. I had a voice modulator implanted alongside the respiratory purification module. But there is an additional reason. Gothic is not my first language. I am used to thinking and making statements in lingua technis. The binaric language is more informative, more ergonomic, and less prone to misinterpretation. Basically computer speak. Uh, I have no more questions. I mistake my leave. May your labors be effective and fruitful. There we go. So, I'm assuming he just doesn't... Uh, no, he's there. Right, okay. So you can just scroll up and down because we have extra people. So we do have Abelard we can level. Let's get that done quickly. It's not going to be useful for this fight, I think, but it's worth keeping in mind. So where were we up to with him? I had quite a lot of armor. Uh, that's all about deflection. Dodge isn't bad, but... Hmm. Wasn't there down here... Just looking for any that are actually particularly useful. Charge and push increase the damage of ranged attacks made against the defective target by a bunch of willpower. End of combat. Ooh. Well, that's really good for a boss because you charge him in and then it takes extra damage. That's quite a lot of extra damage as well because that's 9%. Uh, 
that's all about toughness armor, but he will be attacking every turn. Unlike, well, he could pay, uh, the Heinrich could probably pick that up, but I don't think he, uh, this guy could probably could get away with it. Mm, not really doing area attacks. Assume he has hardened scars. That's really good for having sworn enemy, which is something the other guy doesn't have. So I guess we go with that for now. Any of these really good? Probably Medicaid, because he's one of the few people that can do it. And then here, can't do toughness, strength does nothing, agility does nothing, so it's probably weapon skill bonus. And then from here, probably something down the bottom. Oh, I was getting plus 30 for coming here. Okay, so that's all about cover penetration. Not particularly useful for our stuff. That would be about shooting. Probably negate melee superiority is a good step. Or we could just give everyone toughness. Probably just negate uh, melee superiority. Okay, that's enough of the background stuff getting done. Uh, don't think we have anything else to do, so probably head down to the planet. How are we looking for time-wise? Uh, okay, so what I'll probably do, given how long those conversations took, is we'll head down to the planet, do a quick sweep round, make sure we haven't missed anything on there, because we did do a full sweep of the other situations. I haven't done a full switch, uh, sweep around the capital. Won't be, like, too long, but we've done Thunderfang visit, done that, done... Have we done anything at Myris? Scan is required. I'm going to pop over here. Because there was nothing over here in beta, but I'm curious. The fact it says scan is required makes me think there might be something there hidden. So let's have a look, see. Ooh, what's this? Unidentified void ship. Uh... A large object among the lifeless rocks covering the planet. A void ship, new signature and origin, impossible to identify from orbit. Edge of a deep ravine. Oh, okay, yeah, so this is something. Having to any vital side aboard or near the ship. So it's a dead ship. Uh, yeah, roll Lord Xena, send a squad in to uh, explore the void ship. Was that the level up noise again? Um. Port survive box as soon as they touch down the claustrophobic ship before them is covered with spikes. It resembles a morbid beast sculpted from darkness itself. So it accurately determines the origin of the dark range called the Drukari. So this is a Drukari ship. Ray collapse at the moment. The void the void ship emits a low long woeful creak is a promising drag. If promising to drag the abyss, anyone dares to avoid it. Essentially you board it, it's gonna um nuke. Abelard suggests finding what Xenos were doing in Rykad system. Taking heed, like the rogue trader orders to send more people to the planet. Okay, so let's investigate. Anxious, Adira tells the Lord Captain that the voices in her head are screaming, repeating the word Harbinger, darkness, death. Not wanting to tempt destiny, the rogue trader pulls back. So that's recommending withdrawal. Uh, the sister eagerly says that only good Xenos is a true servant of the Emperor shouldn't solve their hands with Xenos technology. Rogue trader orders that more people be sent to the void ship to collect valuable findings. So that's possibly a profit factor gain there. Um, being the God Emperor's Chosen won't go digging around Xenos trash. The artifacts of humanity should be wiped. The, the artifacts of enemies of humanity should be wiped from the crown center. So essentially the options are finding intel, which probably leads to some story lore benefit possibly to help out in the final section. This is just withdraw. This is leave it alone. This loops the ship, but we probably lose something on the pl on the downside of it. And then this is blow it up. Hmm. Profit factor is a thing we're definitely after, and I do like the idea of being a looting guy. So I'm going to test this option. I have no idea if it's right. So what do we get? Saltman of Drukari blood and needles. Piercing splinter cat. So a bunch of Drukari stuff. Okay, it's so not that valuable. 
and then I assume we can't do anything with it. Curious. Does that show up in inventory? I mean, that definitely got us the last level we need, so we're now maxed on our basic thing. Bunch of Xenos artifact fragments. That would be helpful for getting stuff up. Where didn't we get a needler? Or at least it said we got a needler. There it is. I suppose I kind of rate a fire five. Uh, does toxic shot? I'm going to assume that does something. Requires strength 60 or Drukari weapon precision. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be quite hard to use. Curious though for later having that around. Uh, probably get the level ups done now. Then head to the capital. And then next episode will just be the entire last of Act 1. Okay. So I didn't quite get where I wanted to. But you know. Could have been worse. Um, definitely. Like her setup is going to be full debuffing whatever she hit. Like single target wise. These level ups should be really quick. Because it should just be ability picking. Uh, what did you pick before? Where Where is the thing? There. I can't remember what you picked before. Is it telling me? Uh, okay, so his is the AoE debuff. Well, if he's got that, then he probably wants... that. Or do I just stick everyone with... Uh, no, we'll do this, because he's, he's going to be a melee one, so the attacks are opportunity matter there. Your one... What did you have initially? So you have extra melee damage on the turn. He goes nuts. One round. Taunts everybody. Gains parry and deflect until end of combat. That's not bad for a tanky one. Or he goes... Nuts. So that's 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 a whole bunch of movement. That's a whole bunch of movement after moving. So that's good for chaining the kills. Not necessarily good. I probably want him as the tanky one between those two. And then you had what did you pick up before? You picked up that one. So let's have you pick up. The AoE one. Not that you're really going to use that ever. Um, soldier. What did you pick up before? The area attacks deal the damage equals the number of ta uh, number of attack targets. So that's an AoE based one. Rate of fire is not really going to be relevant because we're turning into a flame and melter. Already got that one. So it's a difference between being able to move and shoot a lot. Which is useful I guess. Or... 20% harder to dodge. That gives her armor penetration and just general hits, which is really good for a flamer based attack, so we'll go with that one. And then finally, the officer. What did you pick up before? Finest Hour. Then next turn, deals 2 damage and gains voice of command. So that's really good. Is there any others? Because I want, I want her basically buffing one guy and it going nuts. That allows it to pass around and gains AP back. So that's really strong. That's a cleanse. And that's a uh, defensive buff. So we'll just go with the full... Um, <laughs> just with the full, I'm going to nuke everything. And then we'll head over here. But we'll probably end the episode now. And the next time will literally just be the final part of Act 1. So I will leave it here. And I will see you guys in the next one.